Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel. I'm Dee, and joining me today is a really good friend of mine, and her name is Kim. How are you doing, Kim? Hi, Dee. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to see you. It's been a while. So how are you doing? What's going on? What's new? It's been a while, Dee. <laughs> um, I have a new baby, so you'll hear her talking in the background. I know. Tell me her name and how old she is. So her name is Hili Na'i and she's three months old. So we're enjoying our last month. Three months already. So fast. Yes. Yeah, so we're enjoying the last month um, that I get to be home with her on maternity before heading back to school, back to the classrooms. Yeah. How, how has maternity leave been? Oh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, just getting the time to be you know, I, I started the school year off, which was good. I got to go for the first two weeks, you know, get, get the teachers settled, mm -hmm. um, check in with my students, make sure um, they were ready for the year. And then my subs already, and then maternity leave. So that to me, I really appreciated and loved. So I know, um, knew I had all those, you know, in order before I I'm returning back in January. So at the end of the semester, I'll get to go back. Um, and then just being home with your little ones. You don't want to go back to school after your maternity leave. I know, I bet. <laughs> I want to stay with my baby. Right, exactly. And it was kind of interesting, um, kind of navigating, just getting maternity leave in the schools. Oh, so that, paperwork and... Yes, um, I think it's um, important for any moms in the teaching field because... Um, at least I'm, I'm in the state of Hawaii, um, we do not get maternity leave. So you, um, through FMLA, so um, it's the federal law, um, family, um, what is it, Family Medical Leave Act, you're given, um, you can take, they will protect you, meaning you can get off from work, but it's all leave without pay. So um, if you can afford to do that, you know that you have that, that, um, leave you can take you're entitled to take it but it will all be leave without pay um, and so in your school district um, at least I only can speak from Hawaii if you have any sick leave you can then you would use up all your sick leave um, within that that allotted time frame and then anything beyond so any leave beyond that is going to go leave without pay wow that's so interesting so how come it's like that? I never really paid attention to that. Um, but with the union, I mean, is that anything that the union can negotiate? So uh, with the union, they have um, a maternity leave share program. And so with that is you can, you're entitled to 60 days um, in a year that you can um, get, you can ask fellow co-workers they have to be in the same bargaining unit as you to donate leave to you so that is um that's something that I had learned with all of this is so you use up all your sick leave and then you don't have any leave um you go that leave without pay or you'd have to apply for this um maternity leave share mm -hmm. and it was really quite interesting because navigating and trying to go through it um here we they're called SASAs. They're the ones who kind of like manage all the paperwork in the schools. I'm not sure if it's the same in all the other places, but they really didn't have any information about maternity leave. They just, everyone, it's common information, FMLA. And so it actually required like tons of Googling and, and finding that in the document here in Hawaii is from 2014. So there's not even an updated maternity leave form, um, but that is still the one. Yeah. So that was interesting having a goal. So I did have to contact my union because I was kind of already told you're probably not going to qualify. You won't be. And I'm just like, come on, I'm a teacher. I can't really afford to. I ain't got no sugar daddy. He also works in the school. <laughs> so I cannot go leave without pay, but many can. And that's awesome. But so that was just a little for anyone going maternity leave in the schools, find out about it. Um, mm -hmm. Know there's a federal law in place. 
but find out what through your union you have and if just through the state in your school. Um, but exhaust it all, use it all because we need that time home with our our babies, but yeah. also if we can get it paid. Right. Less wow, that's unreal. So you're making me think about, or I'm reminded of friends who did live there and then have since moved. Um, and I'm trying to think, did they have that baby? I think they had it, their first baby in Hawaii and then moved and then had um, more children <laughs> since moving. But now that makes sense. Oh, I got to go back and ask right? them about that. And you so know, that's one of the reasons why they moved. Oh, but you, I mean, you know, exactly. Because that's a big, like with my first child, you obviously have saved up leave because it's your first baby. Um, so that was like totally fine. My second one, I, um, I had did sabbatical leave okay. and then it was also in the end of COVID. So we were already all home. So I was, our, you know, working from home on the, everything was virtual. So that all really worked out. And then, um, number three was a beautiful surprise. <laughs> and so, um, I didn't have all my leave and all that, um, you know, saved up because I've obviously used it up when you have babies. So I had to figure out what other options there were, um, in place. And, and thankfully I did get approved, um, for leave share. And so, and beautifully enough, there were actually many people who are wanting to donate. Um, some of them were because, you know, they were planning saving sleeves, but they didn't end up having their baby. Um, and so they wanted to donate it. Um, many of them, some of them are retiring. So there are just so many beautiful people out there um, who, who were wanting to donate, which thankfully, um, you know, thank God I had them that they were able to help me be able to stay home with my child. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I remember seeing what uh, posts about your mom, but tell me again, what happened with your mom? So my mom was a teacher in the DOE for 40 years. And um, yes, there was a brand new administrator had who had moved in um, and did not, there's personality conflicts, let's just say. So she did not care for my mother. Um, and so there are some problems going on. But, so my mother filed uh, basically harassment and creating hostile environment against her principal. Mm -hmm. um, and what ended up happening is that after she had filed that, they actually, um, they, as in her principal, came back to her and um, two days later escorted my mom off campus and saying that my mom was the person who was creating this hostile environment. Um, and so my mom was placed on leave. Mm. And so, um, as I mentioned, my mom has been teaching at that time, it was 40 years um, and has a huge, um, I mean, people just love her um, from the community. And um, <clears throat> And so there was a big uh, kind of like outpour of support in defense of my mother um, that had happened. So news reporters were reaching out to the family, um, finding out about, you know, what was happening because that just was against her character. Yeah. Um, and so they put her on leave. It was 444 days. She was on leave um, while they were conducting an investigation. And um, during that investigation, it was really quite sad because they couldn't find an investigator who was willing to investigate um, and who was able to because um, things were not very much adding up. So they finally hired a, another brand new person um, from America, the continent, who moved here, who doesn't know anybody in the community. And so she conducted the investigation. So oh, who paid for it? Was it the union or? Um, no, so the DOE is the okay. one who they, they carry this out and it's a DOE employee. This person works for the DOE. Um, and, and so they ended up, so on day 444 is when my mother was given the notice that um, her investigation had concluded 
and they did not find any evidence supporting the claims against her um, and that she was able to be returned to the classroom. And um, so that kind of was the end of, of all of that. Um, so now, you know, we're two years later, so 42 years after all of that had happened. Um, and she had, so um, the end of last school year was the end of that time. Um, she had put in that she was going to be retiring um, at that time. She, she, she learned, you know, what life would be like out of the classroom um, and being as heartbroken as she was that, that uh, principal um, brand new, doesn't really know her, doesn't know the community would come in and I, teachers, they love their classroom. They love their communities. They love their, if you're a teacher for a long period of time, you're doing it because it's your passion. Yeah. And for someone to come and kind of like steal that passion from you. And she was heartbroken. Um, it was really nice to finally get closure, but um, that chapter of her life um, she chose to finish it. And so she's retired now. Um, all these schools are calling her, please come work at my school. Yeah. Um, so she's been doing interviews, but, she, and she's just like, can I just come and like make copies or help <laughs> if you need help, but I don't want to work again. You know, I'm loving retirement. She's full-time grandma. Um, yeah. she's, her turtles are her passion so she's been baking so much and just <laughs> and cute. so it's really neat because because of all of that what was going on um I was kind of using my Facebook platform to post a lot of things from the the union contract and get yeah. gathered lots of forms that teachers don't necessarily know about to per help them um, if they're going through any of these trials and tribulations in the school because we were really realizing that principals are very protected and teachers are not um, and most times teachers do not win um, and so several teachers actually two of them um, had quit from her school because of this principal and now they're wishing that they had fought the fight that my mother did. Um, and so sometimes when you, you know, you're right, you know, you have nothing that you've done wrong, even though, you know, you're going to be taken through the ringer. If you are, can, if you have the support behind you, I would totally advocate for you to push through it. And, and, and you know, but I don't like seeing the word fight because it sounds like negative, but you know, you know what I mean yeah. when I say that though, right? I know what you're saying. Right. Hey, so, come yeah. on. It's exactly. And just and prove, prove to me is prove your innocence. Mm -hmm. prove your innocence. I like that. Well, that was quite the exciting year. <laughs> oh. well, I'm glad I'm she's happy now. Exciting would be the word, but yes. Yeah, I'm glad that she's happy now. That's wonderful. So um, tell me what you're doing now. I'm the school counselor. My official title at my school is behavior intervention teacher. Okay. Um, and so uh, my school size is 589 students. So we're um, fairly small um, elementary school. We have kids from preschool all the way to fifth grade. And um, I'm basically in charge of running the school-wide PBIS or positive behavior intervention system mm -hmm. for our school, um, as well as all the 504s um, for our school, and then doing all of the, um, any of the school level counseling and um, supporting the students and teachers along that route. Oh, that's wonderful, because teachers need support. Oh, yes. I'm sure, so how do you um, like your job compared to being in the classroom? So I absolutely love, love, love it. Um, I <laughs> I think it takes a very special person to be in a classroom mm -hmm. um, all day, every day. Yeah, um, I agree. And then you, you, exactly. And then um, my background was special ed. And so um, that was, you know, very fulfilling, learning to write IEPs, working with the kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, so I still get to do 504s, which is so I'm, you know, still able to do the paperwork and support the students and the teachers as far as with whatever accommodations they need. But now that I'm the school level counselor and um, 
on a, a part of the leadership team, I get to kind of have more of like a bird's eye view of the whole school mm -hmm. um, and, and getting to support the school um, school wide. So rather than just focusing in on just, um, you know, in your classroom or this individual need or even just the grade level, now I get to um, over help with overseeing and support. And because there's um, seven of us on our support team, you know, we're able to break up and really focus in on each on a grade level um, and then still come in and, you know, brainstorm. So it, to me, it really kind of helps the school systemically when you have people yeah. um, who are not necessarily in the classroom, but yet I'm still, we're still very much hands-on mm -hmm. with the students, but in a different capacity. Yeah. But I, I love it. I love, um, I love the change. I love getting to support different teachers. Um, as a school counselor, I have even teachers coming in to me and, you know, wanting to talk stories or needing some counseling, um, hmm. even like the admin. So it's a different, a different, different shoes, um, a different hat that you're wearing. So you get to be approached differently, but um, I appreciate being able to support the school from, from this this avenue yeah absolutely I love that um so how did you transition from the classroom into this role yeah so um as I mentioned um I was when I moved to Maui because I used to live on work on a different island um I started off going back into special education um and then what I ended up doing was um of, when you're special ed you know you support wherever those kids are and you're going to support those classrooms, those peers. Um, and what ended up happening is that there was a greater need across the whole grade level mm -hmm. than just in the several classrooms that I were, was in. And so um, I was found that it was more beneficial for my kiddos and those teachers if I was supporting more of the population. So I started um, kind of helping all of the teachers in that I was in fourth grade at that time. And um, thankfully they thought I was doing a great job with providing the kids the support, um, helping with like even talking with parents um, just because I, some of them were newer teachers and I had been there I've been teaching for some time before then. And so they were just comfortable liking having an additional person that was willing to come in and support their kiddos, but also them as, as teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and so the following year, um, this position had opened up and then I, so I applied for it and um, I had lots of thankfully good references from all of those teachers who really saw that it was more beneficial to have me supporting bigger groups of kids rather than just the, the smaller number. Um, and then more teachers could access me as well. And so that was thankfully really how I fell into this kind of position. Um, and then, so this is, I think this is like my sixth year of doing this role um, at the school. And I, I just absolutely been loving it. It's been what a it's blessing. Been great. That's amazing. I'm it so really glad was. how things have worked out. It really, really. So what are the top two things that you learned your first year or your first couple of years of teaching? So whew, that first couple of years of teaching. <laughs> And even, even if, cause like I mentioned, I had moved from Oahu, one Island to Maui. Mm -hmm. So it's your brand new teacher again, when you go to a new school, sure. yes. when you go to a new state, um, you're brand new. So there's going to be many times that you're going to be in this new That's quote unquote new teacher true. role. Mm -hmm. Um, but something so, you know, my very first year, and that's when I had met D, you know, you straight out of college, you think I'm going to write all my lesson plans and fresh out of college, you know, you think you, you, you're ready, you're, you're so excited, you're gung ho, you have your lesson plans ready, and it's going to all go according to plans. And then you realize, okay. <laughs> 
No, it is not. But that was really great thinking. Um, so I think that first year that that energy is what was really awesome to get you through it. But also um, you're a little bit naive. And so just just being gentle on yourself and realizing um, that's where that flexibility, you're going to hear that term a lot. You're going to learn flexibility real fast in that first year because all those plans you wished and hoped for, um, they don't happen. And, and that is okay. Um, and so relying on, you know, thankfully I had great support in the class that helped with, you know, um, okay, we're going to change it up real fast. Or, you know, this child isn't quite there. How are we going to meet them? Um, being able to be flexible and fix um, on the fly or throw out your lesson entirely. <laughs> and yeah, you were really go- good with that. I remember you were really good at like rolling and okay, we're going to do something else now. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of have to. And I think um, for a while I beat myself up about it and you kind of feel like a failure. Oh, but yeah. you don't realize as a new teacher, those failures, what you're thinking from, if you do take the time to reflect, and I was so appreciative that I had you and I had several other coworkers who are very um, reflective and help challenge me to reflect that it helped you realize where you can find, you can build from that. Um, mm-hmm. So that I think was really, really. So, and then the, in the learning of it is you cannot come head force um, straight on with thinking you're going to teach um, <laughs> the, the big really to me the biggest shift was you got to build that relationships oh yeah so all these years later um whether it's with your coworkers, whether it's with your admin um but for sure with your students and the parents in the classroom is starting starting off every year and I would say the first two weeks should strictly be relationship building, um, community building in the classroom, getting all those routines down, how you want them to turn in their papers, um, how you want them to um, move within the classroom. We're in elementary, so washing hands, um, getting all those routines in place in those first two weeks is huge because once all of that is in place after that you it it makes um starting to add your lessons in and their willingness and ability to um want to contribute and participate a lot uh, more smoother because we don't really think about when you go to like the new place you're like nervous where's the bathroom or, you know, if I want to stand up, can I go here? What? And so when you got those routines in place, you have that relationship, it really gets, um, gets rid of a lot of those anxieties and those unspoken unknowns that kids are uncomfortable um, or that may behaviors might surface because they don't know. Um, and so it really helps to um, kind of even the playing field for all of them off the bat but then also they feel comfortable that they can ask each other and bounce off of each other things that they can do or shouldn't do or so true and I love that because <clears throat> I've noticed the difference you know over the times when I've had like my set routine that the kids know they come in they you know they do the quick ride and you know they get ready for the lesson or you know we're going to review it's really interesting Um, the dynamic of our classroom it's almost like what you were saying if the kids don't know what's going on it's like this anxiety and they're just like what are we doing now versus when you have that routine and just everybody knows and it becomes very smooth and and kids get excited because they know what's what's next and or today's Wednesday and that's when we do this activity or today's Friday and that's when we do this you know um it definitely for some reason and and it's probably because some kids are coming from homes where there's a lot of volatility and you know things that they don't know like if they're going to eat or you know there's those extremes and so it is really comforting for them to be able to come to your classroom feel safe 
and know what's expected of them or or know what to expect about their day but <clears throat> it's definitely even noticed after um all of the teachers coming in to teach now after the pandemic it's a total different beast in the classroom um right it is everybody talks about like social emotional lessons that they didn't learn because they didn't interact with people for a year and a half or whatnot. And now they're actually able to be with their friends, but they've um, acquired all of these bad habits on social media. And so oh, it's, it is so different because even security at the school, so the school that I taught at last year, we had to have security at the bathrooms, right? Because they're tearing up the bathrooms and then they're recording it on TikTok or whatever. Um, you know, something that wasn't a problem before. So that became a trend over. I, I don't understand that. Yeah, they seem a lot more immature, but and I just think you know, some of them were either didn't have parents at home that were helping them or were coddled <clears throat> you know, because they had so many people at home with them doing everything that they kind of didn't know how to act returning to the so that school year for me was the hardest hardest year returning back because that what to me was like we were dealing with um all of these emotions and lack of ability to socialize with people um and then parents were very uh like high strung and and but teachers <laughs> were very emotional so I don't know how many teachers that would have come crying or like mad off. and so it's just like all this like post COVID energy was had to be worked out and then this year I've been gone I was only there the first two weeks and so some teachers have been telling me it's it's still crazy so I'm, I'm hoping that next semester will will be different but um yeah that's a really good point about the emotions that everyone is experiencing because I remember when we started the 21-22 school year no wait was it yeah 21-22 school year that um a lot of focus was on the kids and a little a little bit on the parents but then nothing on the teachers like there was no discussion about what the teachers are going through and how they're coping and adjusting and so you know, listening to you, I, I think to myself, yeah, where do the teachers go to discuss what they're experiencing? Because they're experiencing all of it, right? They have to be strong for the kids, and then they have to be strong as they communicate with the parents, and then they have their own personal um, things that they're going through. And so, yeah, it, it's nice to uh, remember that teachers also need some love <laughs> um, and support what is your temperature so i get congested <clears throat> let me look i'm gonna look at what it says that it is and what it feels like <laughs> okay so it says that it is currently 39 degrees feels oh. like 35 oh ours. it's been cold here i've been lighting the fireplace once we hit 70, 69, yeah, I light my fireplace. It's, that's cold <laughs> for us. <laughs> okay, that is hilarious. We did light a fire this weekend. <clears throat> oh, see? Because it was like 20 degrees. <laughs> it, yeah, it is actually. I did say that it was going to snow um, next weekend, but <clears throat> it's in that possible realm because they started to prepare things out on the road for snow. Because oh. I think sometimes it's unpredictable. It can snow without warning. I know they try to predict, but sometimes it could shift, you know, last minute. Okay, so I guess the question would be more of, if you were to give advice to yourself as a new teacher, <laughs> knowing what you know now, um, what would that be? Have grace with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and believing that you know you you're gonna try your best you, you love all your kiddos and there's sometimes that you can't get through to all of them and mm -hmm. know that you're not a failure if that happens because mm -hmm. 
there's going to be another teacher the next year that may be able to to get to them. I know that was a big thing for me because I'm in the behavioral realm um, and kiddos, um, I've only had one and that kiddo will forever stick out for me mm -hmm. um, that I just didn't feel we were able to get that connection. Um, yeah. And, you know, but to see them years later and they, they were able to find an adult in their life in the schools. And so that was just really fulfilling that even though, you know, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to have that connection, they, there was still someone. So there's still hope. Um, but as far as being in, in the, in the classroom, okay. So advice I would give myself as a new teacher, um, something that I find really important is finding another, another teacher who you can, you know, run to if you have questions, um, <clears throat> so kind of that, that's a, uh, not only just emotional support, but a professional support for you as well. Um, I think it was really, really important to help navigate when there were things that were unknown, um, because there's going to be many of those unknowns, but you're also going to want someone that you can, you know, bounce ideas off to um, when you're going on field trips and a student can't come, another mm -hmm. teacher that you can. So kind of, it really feels like you have a family support at school with you, um, but also bouncing ideas off of I lessons, you know, um, what kind of lessons can we do to approach um, this? Because I have this type of student who, who's not getting it. Um, I really, that community and that relationships is really important for me. So I, I find um, having another adult, um, another um, coworker, another teacher um, in the school that you can, you know, confide in that to help you out when you're in those, because there are going to be a lot of um, stressful times. There are going to be a lot of um, times where you're feeling defeated. Um, mm. But those times, hopefully, and if you have those right connections in school, um, are going to be just little speed bumps and like going to get you through. And there's going to be a lot more of those of those good times. But having someone to hold your hand and help you, not even hold your hand, but just pat you on the back or give you a kick in your butt um, in, in those moments of, you know, <laughs> you're indecisive or you're unknown or like dang I should have did this or how can I get this better just having someone there to help you um, talk through it who knows what you're going through I think That's is really really helpful I love that you're absolutely right I really like that um because I'm I'm thinking back to to my um first couple of years and it's true having someone as a sounding board for you, or you can just think things out loud, someone who gets it, right? Like you don't have to explain why you just, bleh, you know, you just spit out your day and, um, or what's going on in your mind. Cause there's just so many things and getting advice back, but even still yet, just someone who can listen and, who understands <laughs> can just make you feel better so that you can go back um, to your room with a clear mind and, you know, um, figure things out. Um, but also too, it is really nice to get some suggestions or, you know, someone who's been there who can tell you, you know what I did. Um, I I've been there and this is what I did, or this is what somebody told me and it worked for me. You know, I love that. It, Cause I, I feel like, just knowing you're not alone is the biggest, greatest thing, because like you said, you feel totally defeated. And then you think you're like the only teacher at the school <laughs> who's going through that. And then once you talk to someone, you realize, oh, okay, somebody else has felt my pain. <laughs> right. And I think along with that is take your lunch breaks, take those yes. breaks. And at those times, it could be, you know, you're just laughing with someone. It could be even laughing with a student, um, but take those breaks because there's going to be many times where you just want to stay and just endlessly. Um, I would come home six, seven o'clock at night because I didn't have kids then. And you just, 
but the work's going to be there again for you in the morning. So take Mm -hmm. those breaks, Mm -hmm. give yourself that time, whatever me now, because I have a family and my cutoff is four o'clock. Um, I, I have to stop working in my classroom um, at four o'clock or any meetings. I will not go past four o'clock. I had to make that personal boundary for myself. Um, and then it just makes me like my job even more because I know there is an end. Because us as teachers, we want to take it home. We want to talk to everybody about what we're working on. And, and then it just <laughs> kind of, it kind of can consume you. Um, so having, I think those boundaries is, is also really important. I like how you said that it can consume you because having that awareness so you're not buried alive in your job because that can easily and quickly happen if you don't, you know, if you're not mindful and, and set those boundaries early in your career. <laughs> it, it's okay. It's okay to leave work for tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. But I think your first years, you're just so gung ho. And that's why you can just tell a brand new teacher who walks into a school because they're filled with life and energy and so gung ho. <laughs> and I love that because we still need that energy, we but know. we need to teach you how to not get burnt out because yes. there's too many new teachers, old teachers, any kind of teachers being <laughs> burnt out because there's always going to be work to do. We always have a new student to teach to or a parent to talk to, an email to check. Um, You got to take care of yourself and keep your bucket filled. That's right. We need you. We we need good teachers. We absolutely do. We need need you. We need all of you, all of you teachers. All of you, exactly. Is there like a big monumental lesson that you learned? in your career but see mine is all like behavioral so I don't want to get get there um, no because I mean that could be really valuable to somebody because as we've been discussing I mean right now a lot of teachers are dealing with behavior mm-hmm. so because I I deal with like the most extreme behaviors in there I don't know if there's something you want to add on there but um mm-hmm. I something that I learned when you are working with kids with very volatile and big behaviors is always having another person, um, with you. Um, just, just so you can just be protected, um, in case of anything. Um, I've had a a student that, that was saying that I had, I had hit them. So I don't know if we would want to go there, Um, but no, that's true. Witness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be alone with kids no yeah just just to be but that was kind of mine in my field I don't know if we want to go there because that's kind of yeah. um, no um, I think that's really smart because sometimes kids will come to you during lunch or after school and then it's just the two of you and your door is shut you know so I think nowadays it's smart make sure your door is open that you know people yeah, yeah uh, you just never yeah just never, yeah I mean because um, you just yeah, you just want to protect yourself and the child so that there aren't the any false claims of of any kind. So, yeah, I, but that that's so like negative. Let me think of a positive. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that that to me was like the because I, you know, you feel like a horrible freaking person having those claims against you. That that was not that I got investigated and they knew. Well, there's so many people because I have my radio on, thankfully, and there's people right outside. So they knew that that and then the child ended up seeing that that was not. And I'm trained to do any of the restraints. So they it came out that, yeah, I wasn't. But um, OK, something more positive. Let's see. I loved getting out of the classroom. That was oops. you mean like getting out as in getting to go in the role I'm in now. Oh, OK. Yeah. But okay. I so then that. I like that. No, that's actually a really good lesson because there's a lot of people wanting to leave the classroom. Just the fact that you were able to discover that because mm-hmm. I find it that it's sad that people just want to leave teaching all together. Right. That's but good. there is a way to still find joy 
in education. It's just, so a lot of advice that I've seen on Facebook with people wanting to leave teaching is maybe your school is not the right fit. So maybe just finding another school and trying to give it another <laughs> chance or maybe just in another role, like what you were saying. Exactly. But you're where you're at. So like, for example, for me, I'll be doing a little bit of both with being in person and online and I'm still being able to be with students, but it's not necessarily in the classroom this year, but um, there's still ways to find joy in education. Absolutely. And there, it, there's such a, high, a big need for, for someone. I mean, you know, we're so short staffed at our school. So however we can, and, and, you know, you're going to hear that every year. There's going to be another teacher. I think I want to leave. I think I want to leave. Mm -hmm. So, um, it definitely whether it's applying to a new school if you think it's not the school maybe changing grade levels it's the content that you're just not comfortable yeah. with and so <clears throat> not making you uneasy or it's you know changing going through because I went from gen ed to sped to school counselor I mean you know finding a different um a different position in in the school that that would fit you better and because I couldn't see me being in the classroom for what you have to be in 35 years. I, it, that just sounded, seemed crazy to me, but where I am, I could do this for the, yeah. for the next, you know, like right. how many more years, 15 more years I have, or I could do, I, I feel like I could, you know, I, I could sustain myself. Um, so you just have to figure out what, what is more comfortable for you, where, where you fit and, oh, and find find that joy find, find the joy yes <laughs> awesome so a book that I was thinking about um that I would highly recommend for teachers new old um it's called teachers these days by Jody Carrington and that was a great book um where it kind of talked about real life situations and emotions feelings that we're going through um this year at our school, we were really trying to focus on kind of building up the teachers after being feeling so burnt out, especially returning after um, the pandemic. Um, and so this was a great book that we found um, just within ourselves as teacher friends. We just did a book club of talking about the story, um, the book and kind of the lessons in there. And I actually still even use some quotes from it just as my signature on my my email. But I think it's a great um, resource for teachers to kind of keep in your back pocket to kind of build you back up and realize, um, you know, help you reflect on maybe some things, why you do what you do and ways that you could maybe um, look at them differently to help you through when you are kind of going through those harder times. I like that. Okay. I will definitely check that out. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Kim, for sharing your knowledge. I love it. It's so nice to see you. Um, I hope you'll come back again. I will. I'm <laughs> I'm on maternity till, till January. So it's gonna have to be on a weekend or nights after this, but we'll <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Awesome. Love I'm happy it. I got to get it out. I was like nervous and I was like kind of like, oh, because I hate being on camera. <laughs> You, so you made it super comfortable. I will do a YouTube with you any day, D. Hey, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'd love to check in with you. Well, teachers, as always, just remember um, just to take it one day at a time that you're amazing and you're needed and loved. And as always, you've got this. Yes. If you okay. enjoyed this video, don't forget to click subscribe to the channel, the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And until next time, have a good one.